Set your 15 minute timer then. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll have to talk fast then. I'm okay next. Ready? I don't remember how to do it. <laughs> oh. Feels very strange going out and over. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's all the hot air from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the windows, so cool. This is not built for me. <laughs> there you go. You're nearly there. You straighten up now. Look, if you just sit on that box there. For yeah. Oh. 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 Blimey. Yeah. It's warm oh, yeah. in here. Oh, we all sit comfortably. Yeah. <laughs> so designed to carry an A bomb into an eastern country that will remain anonymous, Russia. <laughs> uh, the big green bomb outside, the yellow sun and the white missile is a blue steel so the difference is the front one's a uh, freefall bomb designed to drop from altitude so this would have been all white mm -hmm. drops a bomb from 56 60 000 feet gary powers spy spy plane u2 got shot down in 1960 at 70 000 feet so that's above the ceiling for this so if they can reach him they can reach these so what do we do we paint a camouflage stick a standoff missile on them and go in at 350 feet so and then but they still have to pop up to drop the missile off because it needs a, a, a time to warm and then it kicks off, but then they can turn away. So the crew doing that, you've got the captain, co-pilot, navigator radar. These do slide round slightly if you're, if you need to look at it. Pull that, yeah, it's, it's loose. Uh, a navigator plotter and an air electronics officer. So once they've taken off, really, they drink coffee and watch the clouds. Yeah. And these three guys here do all yeah, the work. Doing all the work. So what, what, no way I'm getting up to that bit. That, yeah, we normally shut that off because it's so tight and you can see it's all starting to get damaged to stuff. Yeah. So you can have a look up the ladder, but it is, it's really, I mean, I have to breathe in several times to get in there. I'm so. assuming most of the pilots that would have uh, flown this kind of plane were quite small. Uh, Ray Harris that comes is six foot four. Oh, really? But he's thin as a rake. But with his helmet on, he hits the top. Oh, God. So the seats do adjust slightly, but yeah, not that much. Not much. Yeah. Uh, right, so to get his. As an example for the Falklands, to get us to the target, you, these two guys work together. So in essence, what you're going to do is this box here, you would put in you know, a GPS uh, coordinates, for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is you do an offset, this box here has a switch with an offset on it. So when you go to attack the runway at Stanley, it's, it's a long, flat, open area. So the radar can't pick it up. So what you have to do is you look for a mountain here. A promontory into the sea and then another mountain or whatever another promontory and you put those coordinates in you mark on the screen the x is where they're going to be and then you offset it so the aircraft actually flies that way towards the target but the coordinates are here so it offsets them by say 11 kilometers so it's, it's just a, a way to aim at something that you know where it is that's all it is is there still a traditional someone looking down a site still no that's that's the unused bombing reposition there Ah. So it's all done by the navigation and bombing computer. Oh, okay. Which is not the computer you're thinking of. It's big. These big black boxes. And yeah. Big black boxes in the bay in there, and a big black box down further on and stuff. It's all chewing gum and strings and bits of chain and things and big valves. <laughs> uh, so on the Falklands run, they've flown four thousand miles nearly, uh, with a, a, a commercial system down here called Carousel. They switch on the radar and they can't see anything because they're so low, they're at 300 feet. So they pop up 500 feet, 1,000 feet. The scanner picks it, paints a picture on there of where they are. And from the hill to where he's put his cross, he's half a mile out after 4,000 miles in the dark and multiple refueling and a thunderstorm. So that's quite impressive. Uh, so what he does, he uses the little joystick and he taps it until the crosses that he's drawn on there match up with the hill. He'll say, tick out the demand to the pilot, and he's got a little gauge that flicks, deflects that way as, as, as far as the, the error is, and then he just flies until they're straight. Now they're on target. So the computer's all up and running. It knows the height, the speed, the wind, the bombs they've got, what it takes. So as they pop up, uh, the computer tells him 20 miles to target. He's got a little counter that tells him that. He'll be saying 15, 14, 13, and they climb to 10,000 feet. Bomb doors are open beforehand because they want to make sure they open. The computer normally does it, but let's make sure they open. Mm. Comes to the 10,000 feet, top of the curve, bombs come out, they peel off, and the bombs carry on for another 17 seconds in a massive arc because they need that velocity as they curve over to be able to penetrate the runway. Yeah. Yes, they do. That's what I said. Yeah. Uh, so as they come over, they're peeling away now, th full throttle, peels away, and they can see 
the, uh, from the side window, the cup out, you can see from the window, the 17 seconds later, the explosions yeah. go from the So they know they've, they've detonated. Yeah. Uh, of course, so what are the Argentinians doing? They're sitting twiddling their thumbs. What's, you know, what's happening here? They're not shooting at us. So when they popped up the first time, the Sky Guard radar is locked onto them. But they're not sure that who's here, you know, it's, it, could, it must be Argentinian because there's no, no British aircraft here. So they've not done anything. So that's given them a few minutes. And then when they popped up and started to climb, they're like, right, we know it's an enemy aircraft. We need to do something. So this guy here, here's the, it, uh, it's like a horrible noise that goes off. And he knows that it's a sky guard radar from his other instrumentation. Mm -hmm. So he hits a jamming button on a pod on the wing called the Dash 10. And that basically wipes out the radar with white noise. Um, so they're getting like the old telly goes off yeah. <laughs> sort of stuff. Uh, so that's jammed them long enough for them to drop the bombs and get away. Right. And then as they're flying away, they can see all this flak coming up from the, the, yeah. the guns and stuff. So the, the jamming has worked. So he's done his job of making the airplane look like it's not there yeah. or it's somewhere else. That's, that's his, his only job. So all of this equipment he uses, yeah. if they get a missile launch, he'll detect the radar that launched it, jam it, and then send out flares or chaff to distract the, the radar and the missile or a, the heat signature on the other side. Because how long was that from Ascension Island to Falklands and back? It's about 3,000, no, 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 say 4,000 miles. Well, what was 3, that in hours? 3,900 and something. What was that in hours? Roughly? I think the whole the whole trip was 15 hours, 45 minutes. Because I, I do have a question. You're 15 hours in here, Nature's gonna call. What do it you does do? Call. It does call. <laughs> well, plus the fact you've got your ration heaters. Yeah. You've got your ration heaters under there. Look for your soup and your tea. Oh yeah. So you've drunk four gallons of tea. <laughs> Remembering that there's no female air crew at the time. What you do? You have you've got your pee tube. Oh, delightful. One size fits all. You've oh, all got, do they have to share? You've all got one each. Oh, if, you're in, if you're in a Canberra, you're sharing one between three. Oh. And it's your job, when they fill up, to go and empty them into the bucket on the chemical toilet. Why is it my job? Uh, because you're, you've volunteered. <laughs> now, if you've obviously eaten lots of sandwiches as well. <laughs> the chemical toilet. So, no. Job is, on a normal routine mission, helmet off, black bag, Oh, you poop in your helmet. Poop in your helmet, tie it off. That window down there at 40,000 feet. It out. No, no, it, it freezes. No. So, oh. so cold, we switch heating off and it freezes, so we end up with a poopsicle. <laughs> <laughs> you land, open the door, and you go to the airmen. They're earning your 20p on survey duty money, take that bag away. <laughs> That's assuming, of course, the ground crew haven't punched holes in the bottom of it because they don't like it. <laughs> Ooh, and you got to do that with four others in the same room as you. <laughs> well, I'll be down there somewhere, so there's normally like a cushion here for the bottom area to lie on. Mm. Uh, so we've, we've had our tea, we've had our, we've done our business, and then all of a sudden that day glow sign lights up. This red one. That red one, yeah. and that lights up and says abandoned aircraft. Oh, we've got a problem. So they're they're okay. Martin Baker marks for ejection seats. Yeah. What are you going to do? So you flip that panel up there. Click that switch and that blows the door down into that position and locks it, hopefully. Okay. That ladder will normally be over on. here. So yeah. you're sitting on your parachute, it's on your back at the minute. Yeah. In this oh, recess okay. in the seat. Yeah. This is your, your uh, oxygen telecommunication and static line for the parachute. So you pull that little knob there, you've got one on the yeah. other side. That inflates your cushion underneath you with nitrogen. Because oh, okay. if you're under G, you're going to find it hard to stand up. Right. So that helps push you up. You grab hold of your London Underground handle. You got oh, yeah, one there, yeah. one there, and that helps you down onto here. You then slide down the door, and just slide parachute pulls, okay. and he gets a blue light. You do the same. He gets a blue light. This guy's got to push his chair back first because if he inflates his cushion, he'll drop his knees under right. there. And he ain't getting out. Yeah. So that slides back. He then comes down, slides down the door. Three lights. Pull the handle. Top comes off. Yeah. Seat gets ejected out. So they don't go until these. That's three the plan. Gone. But if the, the general agreement we've spoken to the air crew is that if it's getting dire, they're gone. Yeah. You're staying there. You just try your best to get out. Yeah. If that doesn't lock down in flight, you're yeah. not getting out anyway because it'll just blow back up again. And there's no second button for it. Jeez. So that's how you get out. Now if they, if it's an emergency they blow the undercarriage down, so the wheels are down, mm. you've got a nice big black under undercarriage leg there. Which you're just going to slide, Which you're going to slide into. into. So the you? technique is to slide down, grab hold of the jack in your arm like that, yeah. and swing yourself out sideways, and hope you miss the big one at the back. Hopefully you'll drop away far enough not to hit the other one. Yeah. So that's the that's the escape mechanisms. 
Normally what they would do is he would go, he'd blow the top off and he would go. Yeah. And he'd stand as long as he can to give you as much chance as possible of getting out. Right. There would be, there could be people sat here as well. These are six or seven seats, so there are straps, but you'd be sitting on your parachute. This would be the crew chief for the aircraft. Mm -hmm. It would go away to refuel it and help them with it. Or uh, the, on the Falklands, we had the air-to-air -air refueling guy sat here, the specialist. So he's easy, he just he, he just straight out yeah. sort of thing. Uh, if you need to communicate with people apart from the radio, you've got here, that's the very pistol. Oh yeah. So you can, it, because it's a pressurised cabin, mm -hmm. you can drop that, you load it as in that position, drop it down 90 degrees, it opens a port on the outside, you fire the flare off, oh. lift it back up, reload it and pull it down and fire again. So that maintains the pressurisation. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, otherwise you may have to use the little Morse code key there. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then this, the general instrumentation here is all to do, it's duplicated for the engine, that sort of stuff. They can tell there's a radio altimeter, mm. uh, stuff like the uh, temperature in the bomb bay. If you've got a nuke in there, you don't want to get too hot. If it does, you need to extinguish the fire and that sort of thing. So that'll tell them how hot it is. Mm. These are the panels for when they go live on a, a, a nuclear attack run, they drop that down and pull the handle. That, that arms the bomb for the final, final drop sort of thing. What I'm reading true when they're given a patch. The, uh, the early ones patch. were, these are all, you see the, they've all got yeah. black screens on them, so all these screens yeah. would be down, that, that would all be velcroed off with the screens down, yeah. but the, the B ones, the pilot was issued with an uh, eye patch, so when the bomb went off and he got bl if he got blinded, he could just take yeah. that off and he still got an eye, yeah. so that, that was the early B ones they did that, oh, these wow. have actually got the, the screens. Uh, we've got the, above the radar, that's a camera, R88 camera, so that takes a picture of the, the attack profile on the radar they would also have a because there's no bomb aimer they would have a camera on the framework down there to take a picture of what they've just bombed mm. because if you don't do that you've got to go back and see what damage you've done right. so somebody's got to go back yeah. so if you can see you've destroyed it you don't you can go to something else then you don't have to go back uh, and then the final thing they've got in there if you lift that one with a map on it if you can reach it inside there there's a periscope oh, okay so it's just below just by the main leg when you get out you can have yeah. a look there's a little periscope and there's one on the top so he can actually scan out the back of the aeroplane for yeah. incoming missiles and threats and stuff like that. I guess uh, you could use uh, traditional navigation as well, if you can see outside. Uh, they've got here and here of the two, uh, oh, what do you call them? The, uh, Jeff, what's the taking star things? I've forgotten the name of it. Sextant. Sextant. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a sextant there, a sextant there. So yeah. they can continually take uh, readings. Uh, so then obviously then it's, that's a pressurised way of doing it. So mm. I can't remember. Can't this was um, because was it the was it the four minutes where they were sitting on the runway waiting to go? Well, what exactly. would happen is the if there's a scramble, there's a guy downstairs with the, the policeman with his dog, so mm. dope on a rope. No policeman here, I hope. <laughs> so the dog got the brains, but he's got a picture board with a picture on it. So as you run up, if you're not on it, he shoots you, or the dog attacks you. Yeah, uh, he checks that he's got a key, and they check you've got a key. You'll get a password saying Scooby Doo, so that's the let's bomb Moscow code mm -hmm. word. You then he turns the key up there. You turn the key on there. Mm. You pull that handle in. The, uh, the computer takes the rest of the the bomb run into the account, and that's where you drop the nuke. So, yeah. So the four minute thing, the uh, the rapid starts are here. So if the bell did go off, you pull that back, press that button, and all the engines start at the same time. So the crew chief would do that on the ground, and then when the little car turns up, the air crew they climb up strap in while the aircraft's running up. I don't bother with the pre-flights or anything, no, it's you just, just get, go. you start heading down the runway. Yeah. Oh, really? 16 seconds. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> how was that? That was good, wasn't it? Uh, so what have we done? We've done the, we've done the ablutions. We've done the bomb run. You know who sits where. Uh, the little T handle above there, you can just about see some of you. That's for the, what's called oh, the yeah. rat. So there's an emergency generator in the wing. If they lose power, they pull the handle, the rat drops down, generates electricity for the, Flying controls in the back of the aircraft. Yeah, and then you can get down to an altitude of twenty thousand and try and restart the engines because it yeah. won't start at high high altitude. Mm. Uh, the ejection seat. This is a, a, a barostatic unit here, and uh, they've got oxygen bottles on the seat. So if they eject above ten thousand feet, they've got oxygen to breathe. Oh, okay. Uh, you guys will have an oxygen bottle in your parachute pack. Yeah. So you can still breathe it above ten thousand. Uh, and then the seats, basically. These are, that's their parachutes and then they sit on a survival pack, so if they eject over water, mm -hmm. they've got uh, little life raft and stuff. The main life raft craft, life raft, life raft for this aircraft is basically from 
there to the back of where the canopy comes down. All of that has got a massive life raft in it. Right. Uh, mm. We can't actually get at it unless you take the canopy off. Mm. So, but we think it's not in there because the RF would have taken it out when it landed. Right. We hope. Because there would be explosive, uh, yeah. explosive bit in it because mm. they flares. And